Good morning, or should I say afternoon, Cam? We, it's almost twelve. It, well, yeah, it's right yeah, here at it. We're yeah, about, I think we're, we're in afternoon, afternoon mode. Yeah, we're afternoon. It's lunchtime. I'm telling you, I'm about to go get me some lunch. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, happy Easter, happy Saturday, and welcome to Rock Springs Church. We are so excited that you're here. I'm excited to be here, Cam. I'm very excited. It's I Easter know. weekend. Yeah. We just had a great service, yes. and we're having more services so today. Many. So if you're watching, you need to come on. Are you, you really do? Home? You don't have plans? Mm-hmm. Come on, we've got services. Yeah, we've got room for you. Yes, we, we know do. you don't have plans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We know it's a beautiful day. Come spend the day with your friends. Come on, come have some fun. It's going to be great. But hey, if you're new here, if this is your first time here at Rock Springs Church, we would love to give you a gift. You can go to our Welcome Center. And then also, if you're watching online and it's your first time, go to rocksprings.info. We would love to get you some more information if it's your first or one of your first few times here. Also, if you've got one of those little things, they run around (laughs) and they steal all of your energy. Leprechauns? Well, close. If you've got a kid, (laughs) now's a great time to take them to RS Kids because I promise you they will get to learn about Jesus and especially Easter, the Easter story at their level. So you can take them to RS Kids right now. you got four minutes and 48 seconds left (laughs) to take them to RS Kids. Uh, And if you can't find RS Kids, ask any volunteer or find Cam and just give to him. I'll take them. Just give them to Cam. I'll I'll take them over there. Speaking of kids, Mm -hmm. Tess, we have our RS Kids preschool half day program and it's uh, been going great. And uh, But registration is open and it gives mom a break. Only a half so break it, though. I know, it's kind of a half Only day. Half but break. hey, listen, I found if you're a mom and you've got little ones that are like two to three, they'll take the break. Yikes. They'll take Yikes. The, the half day. It's a nice <laughs> half day, I yeah. promise. There's oh, yeah. a lot you can get done. Yeah. And they enjoy it. You can register your child at rskidspreschool.com and you can get them signed up. But registration open now. There's limited spots. If you're interested, mm-hmm. I would reach out like... Maybe now. Yesterday. Yeah. I would have reached out yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, if you're just hearing about it, you can't reach out yesterday, but you can't reach out now. <laughs> also, not just for children, we've got something for all ages mm-hmm. inside of your bulletin that hopefully you got as you're coming in. There's all sorts of ministry from literally kiddos all the way up to mm-hmm. uh, m- major adults, the major league level. Yeah. Big kiddos. Big kiddos. Big kiddos. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got something for everybody. Uh, All throughout the week, services, small groups, options. So if you're new or you want to connect and you say, hey, I've not connected yet, the way to connect is being a part of a small group. So you need to do that. You can look those up at rsgroups.info. But um, there's information also in the bulletin. There's stuff like uh, pickleball groups. Pickleball. Yeah, I got somebody that we kind of harass pickleballers, and they sent me <laughs> they sent me a dirty text afterwards, like "Don't harass the pickleballers." So leave the pickle alone. <laughs> So, Leave yeah. it alone. So we, we love pickleballers. And and then there's the eating groups. That's my real That's favorite. That's my speed. That, those Give me are like my, a cheese my group. Fo- Ooh, Whoa. Those are my folks. So they get together. And then, mm-hmm. of course, Bible study groups and all of the above. Um, so yeah. you can be a part of those. Again, rsgroups.info. I bet Jesus liked cheese. I sure feel he like did. He, I feel like he was a big cheese guy. Yeah. yeah. That, there had to be cheese at the Last Ab- Supper. <laughs> Absolutely. I guarantee you. Yeah. That yeah. hummus. Well, hey, we've got our second annual cancer support ministry color out cancer 5k that's coming up on april 27th um cam are you gonna go run you know what i'd probably be more on the walking side i'm more of the saunter out cancer i I may kind of you know you can kind of walk and run Mm -hmm. um and it's just a great cause it's a great cause wonderful ministry yeah it really is so you can register and sign up or you can volunteer as well at rocksprings.info. So if you aren't like real in shapey, yeah. uh, then you can volunteer, which yes, would be great. You can, need hand, you can hand Being out the oranges or the yeah. apples at the end. I'll need water. You'll, yeah, you'll yeah. need some water. You'll be walking across, more like crawling across. Uh, also, hey, baby dedication. If you have a baby, bless you. Uh, we would love God to get them. You. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. And uh, we can dedicate them on April 21st. And like you said, it's actually more for the parents. Yes. You know, it's it's for you to dedicate your child Absolutely. to uh, to the Lord. You can sign up at rocksprings.info. Also, if you've made the decision to follow Jesus, congratulations. It's yeah. the best decision you'll ever make, but you can get baptized here at Rock Springs on April 28th. You can go to rocksprings.info to sign up. Yes, that's wonderful, Tess. And Are you going to be baptizing you, people? I, well, you going to be dunking? May, I don't want to tell anybody because it limits people from signing up typically. Mm. So let's keep that a secret. And, um, <laughs> if you, you don't know what I'm talking about, if you don't know what I'm talking about, no. just type in like Cameron Shiflet in YouTube. <laughs> no, baptism. it's a waste of time. Don't take your time to do it. It's fine. Down. Hey, listen, if <laughs> one more time we were talking about baby dedication, I just want to remind you again, if you are new, please take the time to take your children over to RS Kids. I, we're not just saying it. They yeah. will have a better experience. Yeah. You will have a better experience. And if you think we're like not talking to you, yeah. 
We are. We are actually. We're talking so to you. if you got kiddos all around you, they're gonna hate sitting in that room. Oh, so you got the time. Worst. Ask yeah. any volunteer, they'll take you over there. <laughs> also, May the fifth in all of our services, Carson Beck. Go dog. You're a dog. Go dog. Fan. Yes. You're I'm a, a correct <laughs> fan is what I am. <laughs> so we're having Carson Beck in all he's the quarterback for people that don't know. He's the quarterback of the dogs, if you've heard of him. But he's going to be here in all of our services on May the 5th. We're yes. so honored to have him. It's and uh, so make plans for that. Yeah, absolutely. Come on down. Go dogs. Support, support the UGA dogs. Uh, well, hey, we have a new sermon series coming next week called Healing for the Hurting. It's going to be really, uh, it's going to be a great message. Yeah, so I'm, everybody's I'm hurting in some way. Everybody is. But hey, I mean, Cam, we're here for Easter. It's a wonderful weekend. It's a great weekend. And today's sermon is called Stone Rolled Away because of Easter. But hey, if you're joining us online, you can always share the gospel by clicking that share button. Even if you're here with us, click the share button because I know you have your phones with you. But hey, happy Easter, Cam. Happy Easter. Let's go ahead and get started. invite you to stand with us and worship on this Easter weekend. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. I want to hear far away stood an old rugged cross the That old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll change the old ragged cross till my trophies at last I
You may be seated. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to Resurrection Weekend at Rock Springs Church. If you're visiting with us, it's just a joy. It's just a joy and delight to have you in our services. We had our first service at 10 o'clock, and several people in that service gave their lives to Jesus Christ. So I, I thank you. I, I want to do something. I want to do something for everybody that's in this service and everybody that's watching. I want to pray for you. This is what I know. Every person has needs. There, it may be a family need. It may be a, uh, may be a financial need. It may be an uh, emotional need, a wayward child. But we all have needs. And I just want to pray that the Lord would meet the needs. If you're visiting with us, we're praying for your needs on this Easter. Let us pray. Jesus, I want to thank you for every person that's in the room. And God, I pray that you would meet their specific need. You said you would supply all of our need according to your riches and glory. So I ask you to do it even right now because you're able. And Lord, I pray for people that are watching online. I pray that you would meet the needs of their lives on this Easter. Because Easter says that God can do anything. <laughs> And Lord, we know you can. So may your blessing rest upon people. And I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, I want you to remain seated because we have a video presentation that I truly believe is going to minister, minister to you this Easter. Fair change. Okay. Sorry, that's all I got. Hey, I'm not sure what you're going through, but hope is never lost. You just have to know where to look.
called sin and shame They were like prisons that we couldn't escape But he came and he died and he rose Those walls are rubble now That stood in our way But he came And he died And he rose Those giants are dead now This is our God This is who he is He loves us This is our God This is what he does He saves us He bore the cross
like Jesus, ain't there? No name higher, no name greater. The cross still stands, the blood still flows, the work is finished, and hell still knows that the grave is still empty, the stone is still rolled, and you're still I'll see you. <laughs> God, it's good to see you. Hey, why don't you go pick out a movie? I'm gonna talk to mommy for a second, okay? Okay. Do you mind? Yeah. <laughs> She's so awesome. God, I miss her. She was really excited to see you. Mm. Anyway, so. yeah. Um, so, <laughs> not to be awkward or anything, I was gonna bring this up last time and I I just didn't know how to say it. Um, look, I know next weekend is not my weekend with Zoe, but but I'm getting baptized, and I was hoping that she could be there. <laughs> Jason. I know. You're getting baptized. Yes, I, I know. Yeah. You're like the last person I'd expect to get baptized. <laughs> yeah. I know. 
yeah, it's been crazy. <sighs> Something clicked for me. I mean, I've been in such a dark place, as you know. And I was tired of being in a dark place, and I dragged myself out of the house. Anyway, um, I didn't know where else to turn, so I and I just went to the church around the corner, and it's like I knew I needed a lot of forgiveness in my life, and I heard that Jesus was the forgiveness guy, so I asked him to forgive me, and I swear to you, I feel like a thousand pounds lighter. And God, I needed that, you know. Anyway, I um, it would mean a lot to me if she was there. Well, Jason, you've changed so much. I have. I'm proud of you. Zoe should be there. We'll make it work. Thank you. Anyway, um, better get back into the kid before she picks a Gilmore Girls marathon or something. Don't have too much fun. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have a great time. Um, you know, you're welcome to join us if you want. Maybe, maybe next time. Next time. See you soon, Jace. See you. much for being here as we celebrate Easter. I appreciate your attendance. Next Sunday, I'm starting a series called Healing for the Hurting. Zig Ziglar said years ago, he said, if you treat everybody as if they're hurting, you'll be treating 90% of the people correctly. We all have hurts just in different areas, and the Bible is the book and God is the one that can help us. I want you to do something. I want you to stand to your feet. If you'd be so kind to stand to your feet. And I want to read from Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 4. This is what God's Word says. It says, and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. It was very great. L let us pray. God, as we bow our heads and our hearts in your presence, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your tremendous blessings upon us this Easter. God, I cannot. You never said I could. You can. You always said you would. So I pray today that you would anoint us, hide us in the cross of Calvary, that people might see Jesus. And God, for all the results, depending on the Holy Spirit to convict people, we'll give you the praise. For I pray this prayer with a grateful heart. For I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you about stones rolled away because of Easter. Stones rolled away because of Easter. It was uh, Palm Sunday, and the Sunday school teacher said to the seven-year-olds in the class, she said, I want to give each of you an Easter egg, just a plastic Easter egg, and said, next Sunday, inside this plastic Easter egg, I want you to bring something that symbolizes Easter. Well, a week passed and Easter Sunday came. 
And they went into the class, and a little girl handed her egg. And inside that egg was a flower, a little flower. And she said, that's good. That represents new life. That's what Easter's about. It's about new life. A little boy handed his egg in. Inside of his egg was a, was a nail. And he said that represents that Jesus was nailed to the cross. And then one of the students handed an egg, and inside the egg was a, was a little rock, a little pebble. And the student said it symbolizes that the stone was rolled away. But there was a seven-year-old boy in the class. His name was Brian, and Brian had a mental disability. And when they opened his egg, there was nothing in the egg. And the teacher said, Brian, it was my fault. You must have misunderstood. And Brian said, no, no. I, I didn't misunderstand. He said, my egg is empty. My egg is empty because it symbolizes Easter and the tomb is empty. The tomb is empty. <laughs> you know, uh, Jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb. Right out there, I have grave lots that I've purchased. I'm going to be buried in those. I've purchased those. Somebody asked me on one occasion, they said, Pastor, why didn't Jesus buy him a tomb? Why did he use somebody else's tomb? And I responded by saying there was no need for him to purchase one. <laughs> he was only going to need it three days. Amen? He was only going to need it three days. Now, our story today, it's about three women. And the Bible says... In the text, in Mark 16, verse 1, when the Sabbath was passed. The reason why the Bible says when the Sabbath was passed is you couldn't buy or sell on the Sabbath day. So these three women had purchased spices. They were coming to anoint the body of Jesus Christ. You've got to understand, the Romans and the Greeks, they literally would cremate bodies the egyptians would embalm bodies but the jewish people even to this day they simply just anoint the bodies with spices and they quickly put the bodies in the ground well these three women were coming to anoint the body of jesus but they were processing on this sunday morning they said friday Friday, when we left, there was a large stone at the door of the grave. There was a stone that literally would have weighed two tons. It would have taken 20 men to, to move the stone. So they were processing. How are we going to get to the body? How are we going to anoint the body? How are we going to do it when this massive stone is in front of the grave. What they didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, according to Matthew 28, verse 2, an angel came and rolled that stone away. And I thought about that stone, and I thought about what a boulder. And I thought about the stones in people's lives that need to be rolled away. I thought about stones of abandonment. I thought about stones of abuse. I thought about stones of addiction. I, I thought about the boulders that re need to be removed, the, the, the boulder of debt, divorce, depression, drunkenness. See, I am convinced that people have bills they can't pay, people that they can't please, pornography that they can't resist, a past that they can't shake. But the good news is, Jesus rolls away stones. The good news is, Jesus rolls away stones. And I want to talk to you this Easter about five stones that Jesus rolled away. See, the first stone that Jesus rolled away is he rolled away the stone of discouragement. 
These three ladies were very discouraged. They, they were bringing spices to anoint the body. What, what would it be equivalent to, Pastor? They were literally bringing flowers to the cemetery. Now, you know what's interesting to me? On three different occasions, Matthew 16, verse 21, Matthew 17, verse 23, Matthew 20, verse 19, Jesus told them, I'm going to die, but I'm going to resurrect. But apparently they didn't believe that. Because ladies and gentlemen, if they believed that, they wouldn't have been worrying about a body decaying. They wouldn't have been bringing these spices to anoint his body. The Bible says that there were two of his disciples on the road to Emmaus in Luke 21 in verse 24. And they said these words. They said, we thought he was the one in past tense. What was they saying? All hope's gone. We thought he was the Savior. Today, people have lost hope. They've lost hope of meeting that mate. They've lost hope of having that child. They've lost hope of that marriage being saved. They've lost hope of physically getting better. They've lost hope of getting out of debt. They've lost hope of that wayward child coming back home. But what Easter says is God can roll away the stones of discouragement. God can roll away the stones of discouragement. I want to show you not what Benny Tate said or some other preacher said. I want to show you what Peter said. Peter who saw the risen Savior. This is what Peter said. He said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Help me, Pastor, I'm gonna help you. Here's what he said. Here's why I have hope. It's because he said, I literally saw the risen Savior. I saw him crucified, but ladies and gentlemen, three days later, I saw the risen Savior. And he said, the stone of discouragement can always be rolled away and we can always have hope because ladies and gentlemen, we serve a risen Savior. But wait, there's another stone that's rolled away. It's the stone of dread. It's the stone of dread. Now, when they came to arrest Jesus and they crucified him, the Bible says in John 20, verse 19, the disciples were scared to death. They literally were hiding out. They were scared for their lives. But think about this. A few days later, they're on the streets preaching the gospel. <laughs> what made the difference? I'll tell you what made the difference. The risen Savior. <laughs> they saw a risen Savior. What have I to dread? <laughs> what have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms of God. I have blessed peace with my Lord so dear. <laughs> Leaning on the everlasting arms of God. All, all I want to say, folks, is we don't have to be controlled by dread. We don't have to be controlled by fear. I've got good news. We serve a risen Savior. One man said, uh, I'm going to see a psychologist because I'm scared. 
And he goes and sees the psychologist and he says, friend, what are you scared about? He said, there's monsters underneath my bed. And he keeps coming and he keeps coming and he keeps coming. And finally, he quits coming. And he's out at a party one night. And he sees his friend, the psychologist. And he says to him, where have you been? You quit coming. He said, I got me a new doctor. And he helped me. He said, he helped you. What did he do? He said, well, I told him about the monsters underneath my bed. And he helped me. He told me what to do. What did he do, friend? He said he told me to cut the bed legs off. Let me tell you, folks. Easter cut the bed, le bed legs off of fear. Easter cut the bed legs off of dread. Easter cut the bed legs off. The stone of discouragement. The stone of dread. There's a third stone I want you to see. It's the stone of doubt. See, when Jesus is resurrected, he comes to the ten. And he says to the ten, I'm the risen Savior. See my hands. See my feet. He, he shows them his hands and his feet. Literally walks through the wall and says, I'm the risen Savior. And then Thomas comes. And they said, Thomas, you should have been here. Jesus came. He's alive. And Thomas said, I doubt it. And then Thomas said these words that are written in John chapter 20. He said, guys, unless I can feel his hands, unless I can feel his side, I'm not going to believe they said, okay. Eight days later, Jesus comes back. And he says, oh, Thomas, look at my hands. Oh, Thomas, look at my side where the spear went in. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. <laughs> my Lord and my God. Now, I've never believed, ladies and gentlemen, that when people come to church, they have to check their brain at the door. I've never believed that they have to check their brain at the door. I just want you to understand, this risen Savior that I'm preaching about, he was seen by 516 different individuals. I just want to remind you, <laughs> That during Jesus' ministry, during Jesus' ministry, for 33 years, when he left, he had 120 followers. I just want to remind you, in the next seven years, there were 100,000 followers. Why? Because there was a Savior that had risen. There was a Savior that had risen. See, folks, I want you to know something. The earliest manuscripts that we have of Julius Caesar, we only have 10, by the way, and they were a 1,000 years after he lived. The earliest manuscripts that we have of Plato, we only have seven, but they were 1,300 years after he lived. I want to report to you, we have 5,800 Greek manuscripts of the New Testament. 5,800 Greek manuscripts of the New Testament. And the earliest was 40 years after Jesus lived. The people were alive that were writing them. I'm trying to say this. Nobody's trying to deny that Plato lived. Nobody's trying to deny that Julius Caesar lived. But why would we want to deny that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, lived and he's risen? 
Pilate said, wait. He said, you got to understand something. This guy has said that he'll be killed and three days later he'll be resurrected. He, he said that. So he said, we want to make sure we've got plenty of guards. We want to make sure we've got 30 guards. We've got guards at every station. And you know what happened. Easter morning, the Bible tells us that that angel came and rolled that stone away. And he scared those guards to death. And the Bible says they ran like scalded dogs. And they went to Pilate in the Sanhedrin and they said, oh, you don't, you don't understand. Look, look what happened. And Pilate in the Sanhedrin said, oh, we've got to have a cover-up. We've got to have a cover-up. Here's some money, guys. You, you, you've got to be able to say <laughs> that all the guards fell asleep. <laughs> and his disciples came. And they stole the body. That's got to be the cover-up. Now listen closely, folks. I didn't want to be a preacher. I wanted to be a lawyer. I, I, I didn't want to save them. I wanted to sue them. But I would have loved to have argued this case. Because I would have said, first of all, so the, the Roman soldiers, they all fell asleep. Well, that's a capital of offense. Why, why wouldn't they be put to death? And I said, wait, so there were 30 Roman soldiers <laughs> and they all fell asleep at the same time. What are the odds of that? And then I would have said, how did, how did his disciples get past 30 Roman soldiers without waking any of them? And then I would have said, <laughs> If the Roman soldiers fell asleep, how do they know who stole the body? All I'm trying to say, folks, I believe in the resurrection because of my faith. But I believe in the resurrection because of the facts. And the facts are on our side. The stone of discouragement, dread, doubt, but there's another stone that maybe needs to be rolled away. It's the stone of defeat. See, there was a disciple. His name was Peter. Peter said these words. He said, Jesus, they may all forsake you, but there's one you can depend on. It's old Pete. <laughs> Open mouth, insert foot. There's one you can depend on, it's old Pete. You depend on me. And Jesus said, old Pete, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. And it happened just like Jesus said. He denied the Lord, went back to his old lifestyle, said, I'm done. But I want you to see something in 1 Corinthians. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day. Just as the scripture said, wait. He was seen of Peter, then the 12. You know what Jesus said? Peter's messed up. But before I go to the disciples, I want to go to Peter. Because I want Peter to know that I still love him. I want Peter to know even though he's messed up, I've still got a plan. Maybe some of you listening to me right now would say, Preacher, I've messed up. Well, let me tell you something. God's still got a plan. God still loves you. God's still got a purpose for your life. This guy, Peter, he preached on Pentecost, and 3,000 got saved. 
He was the leader of the apostles. I was preaching in South Carolina with a man by the name of Dale Bronner. And while we was preaching, he said, Preacher Benny, let me tell you a story. I said, tell me, Dale. He said, the other day, my two granddaughters was in my office. And he said they had a crayon, and one of them was coloring with a crayon. And he said the crayon broke. And my granddaughter came and was crying and said, it, it broke, Papa. He said, wait. He said, that's okay. And he said, I gave her a piece. And I gave my other granddaughter a piece. And then I looked at my granddaughter and I said these words. Honey, you got to realize, until it was broken, you didn't have anything to share. And I've learned many times it's the broken experiences of life that give us something to share. And then he said, baby, he took that broken crayon And he said, there's something else I want you to see. It's a broken crayon, but it still colors. You say, preacher, I'm a broken crayon. That's okay. You can still color. And God's still got a plan. Let me give you one other stone that was rolled away. It's the stone of death. Romans 5 and 12 says this. Wherefore is but one man sin into the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. What, what does it mean, death passed upon, men, upon all men? It means eternal separation from God. Eternal separation separation from God. That's where we all were. Eternal separation from God. Jesus went into the upper room. He was there with his disciples and they thought they were celebrating Passover, a Jewish feast. And Jesus took that cup of wine And he said, guys, this wine represents my blood. I am the Passover. And he took a loaf of bread. And he said, this bread, it represents my body. It represents my body that I'm going to give on the cross for you. And after they had Passover, after they instituted the Lord's Supper, he went to a place called the Garden of Gethsemane. It's an olive garden. There are trees there today that were over 2,000 years old that would would have been there when Jesus went there. He goes to that garden. And the Bible says he starts praying. Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Doctors have said on rare occasions, if a person's under great stress, tiny capillaries will burst in the sweat glands and the blood will mix in with the sweat. The Bible says he was under so much anguish. His sweat became as great drops of blood. While he was there praying, one of his disciples walks up. A man that he just washed his feet. He had just washed his feet in the upper room. And now he's betraying him. He's bringing them in to arrest Jesus. One that he loved. 
Jesus goes through six trials. 36 hours without any sleep. When he does get a moment to rest, he goes to the house of Caiaphas and they drop him through a hole down into this dungeon that I've been in many, many times. And he spends his last night down in that dungeon. It was said they would put trash and debris and dead animals. But that's where he spent his last night. The next morning, pulled him out of the dungeon tied his hands above his head and scourged him. You know, just read that and you just say scourge. What is scourge? It was a Roman exercise. They would take a wooden handle, nine leather strippings. They would tie pieces of bone, steel, metal, glass on the end of the leather strippings. Then they would take and they would beat the person. They would beat the person beyond measure. Most men didn't live past it. They didn't live through it because the intestinal tract would literally be jerked out. The scripture said to look at him, you couldn't tell if he was a man or an animal. They spit into his face. Isaiah said, as he walked through the crowd, carrying a 150 pound cross on his back, that they would reach and grab his beard, pull the hair out of his beard, pull the hair out of his face, as he carried the cross. When he got to the cross, they took nails and they nailed his hands and they nailed his feet. I've given my life to study the cross. But a few weeks ago, I understood a scripture that I never understood before. In the book of Luke, it says, and the soldiers also mocked him. Notice that word mock, sir. They offered him vinegar. I never understood it. I didn't, it didn't make sense. Until just a few weeks ago, it was a tersorium. A Roman soldier would use a tersorium. He would take a sponge and he would put it on the end of a stick. And he would dip it in vinegar. Because you got to understand something. They didn't have toilet paper. So they used a tesorium dipped in vinegar. That's toilet paper. That's why the scripture says they balked as they stuck it to his mouth and said, get you a drink of this. Medical doctors said he died of hypovolemic shock. That if you lose so much blood, the heart's trying to pump blood, but there's no blood to pump because of blood loss. So the organs shut down. 
That's why after six hours, he said, I thirst. I thirst. In all likelihood, he smothered to death on the cross. In all likelihood, he smothered to death. And at 3 p.m., they said, we've got to get his body down. It would desecrate the Sabbath for a body to be on the cross on the Sabbath holy day. So two men, two businessmen, two men of clout, who had enough clout to get his body, by the way. They go to Pilate and they say, can we have the body? They had the influence to get the body. And Joseph of Arimathea said, I, I, have, a, I have a tomb. I, I, I have a tomb that he can be buried in. It's my tomb. And they put his body in a tomb and Friday evening hell rejoiced and Saturday morning the demons and principalities of hell celebrated and Friday night all the corruption of Rome parted but ladies and gentlemen then came Sunday morning and then came Sunday morning. Oh, and then came Sunday morning. And then came Sunday morning. And the Bible says there was an earthquake. <laughs> and an angel came and rolled that two-ton stone away, ladies and gentlemen. And I want you to know, <laughs> the shackles of death fell off. The holds of sin fell off. The holds of death fell off. And Jesus walked out of that grave. <laughs> he walked out of that grave. And Jesus walked out of that grave. And he said, I am he that liveth and was dead. But behold, I'm alive forevermore. Now wait, wait, a couple questions. Why? Brother Benny, why? Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrated, God commendeth his love toward us. that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Sir, he did it for you. Ma'am, he did it for you. Benny Tate, he did it for you. Why did he do it? He did it for us. I owed a debt I couldn't pay. He paid a debt he didn't know. The Son of God became the Son of Man that the sons and daughters of men might become the sons and daughters of God. That's what happened. <laughs> Sir, here's the question I leave you with. It's in John. Jesus said to Martha, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me Though he were dead, yet shall he live. You're just going to pass from physical death to eternal life. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me, he'll never die. And then he said, believest thou this? 
And I've got one question for you. Believest thou this? It's a question that Jesus is asking every one of us today. Believest thou this? Every head's bowed and every eye's closed. With every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking. First of all, let me say something. I'm not going to call your name. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to bring attention to you in any shape, form, or fashion. In no capacity will I do that. I give you my word. But Pastor Benny, I'm here today, and I don't have the assurance that if I died, I'd go to heaven. And I know you won't bring attention to me, Pastor Benny. I give you my word, I will not. But I don't know that my heart's right with Christ, Pastor. And this Easter, I just wish you would pray for me. If you would like for me to pray for you with no one looking but me. Preacher, I'd like for you to pray for me this Easter. If you would, would you just slip your hand up at this time? Just up and right back down. Just pray for me, Pastor. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Just up and right back down. Pastor, just pray for me. I'm waiting on your hand today. God bless you. I, I'm waiting on your hand today. I'm in no hurry. I'm, God bless you, ma'am. I'm in no hurry. Pastor, just, just pray for me. I, I believe there's another hand that needs to go up. I'm waiting on your hand. Just pray for me, Pastor. Please do. Now listen closely. If you're watching online or you're in a campus, friend, if you raised your hand or if you're watching online, repeat this prayer with me if you raise your hand. Say these words. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. But God, I'm sorry about my sin. I'm so sorry I want to change. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. And I confess them to you right now. Come into my heart, Lord. Come into my life and forgive me. Now, thank you, God, for forgiving me. Thank you for coming into my life and saving me. Pastor, I prayed that prayer with you. If you did, would you hold your hand up where I can see it? Just hold it up. That's it. Just hold your hand up. That's it. You're doing great. You're doing wonderful. I prayed it with you, preacher. Just raise your hand up where I can see it. That's wonderful. You're doing great. You're doing great. I couldn't be prouder of you. I couldn't be prouder of you. Many people in this service have prayed to receive Jesus Christ. Folks, I want us to stand to our feet. Amber's coming to tell you about something. She's coming to tell you about something that's so important. Online, online campus, thank you so much for joining us today. If you prayed that prayer, all you have to do is type four simple words in the chat box below. I prayed that prayer, and we have chat hosts standing by who want to pray for you and with you. If you're watching this after we're live, you can go to rocksprings.info and click the button, I prayed that prayer. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for today, and God, we thank you for each and every person on the other side of that screen. Lord, thank you for our online campus and just what they mean to us. And Lord, I pray right now for those people who prayed that prayer. God, I pray that you would help them grow in their walk with you. And God, thank you so much for bringing us this message today. Help us to apply it to our lives this week. And Lord, we love you with all of our hearts. Amen. 
online campus, if you haven't already, go ahead and click share because you never know whose life you can change. If you're new, if you need prayer, or if you'd like to become a member of Rock Springs Church online, you can do so easily at any time by visiting us at rockspringsonline.com. We'll see you right here next Sunday morning.